Hi, I'm Mike Shaheen with HHO Connection. This is the second video in a short series that I'm putting together for people who are just getting into HHO. Today I want to cover the difference between a wet cell and a dry cell. It's a term you're going to hear quite a bit. I'll show you the difference between the two types of cells and why I think the dry cell is the way to go. First, let's take a look at what we call the wet cell. Now, most of the designs you're probably familiar with if you've been following HHO for a while are what we consider a wet cell. The water for gas, the mason jars that has a couple of stainless steel wires wrapped around the inside of that, that's a wet cell. Um, the, the water filter housings where, where you take the, you know, you, you stack your stainless steel plates up and dip them inside of a bath, a bath of water inside of a water filter housing, that's a wet cell. Stanley Myers design, that would be considered a wet cell. Basically, a wet cell is anything where you've got uh, any type of a cell where you've got the plates, the wires, the tubes, whatever it is, submerged in some sort of a, uh, a container that has your electrolyte in it. And then you run your wires or your, your metal straps or bands or whatever down into the bath of water to connect your plates or your tubes. Here's an old cell that I made, one of the first ones that I, that I played around with. It's basically just seven plates and that was submerged into this container and then sealed off with your electrical connections on the top, your positive and your negative. The problem with that design is the current wants to go from the positive over to the negative plate and take the least path of resistance. So it's instead of forcing its way through those plates, which it will, um, a lot of that current's going to get wasted when it just, it's going to jump, it's going to bleed off the edges of these plates, both the bottoms and the sides. Now this one I covered up with a piece of inner tube, which would, which helped some of the, the, the leakage with the sides, but it was still just bleeding out the tops and the bottoms. A very inefficient design. Another problem with the wet cells is this, uh, for, safety to, for safety considerations. If they're not built properly, um, there could be a safety hazard. Uh, the, the problem is, when you s in order to get the positive and the negative contacts down into that bath, you've somehow got to get a wire or a strap or something down through there. Let's say you run a wire from the positive up here down through here and connect it to the plates inside the bath. You have one little spark down in there. It's going to create a short and all the gas that's accumulated in here is going to explode. And if you have a mason jar or depending on whatever your container is, it could explode and send shards of glass or whatever your container is made of um, flying. So another reason why the wet cell design has the possibilities of being a, a, a less safe design. But it's definitely less efficient regardless. Okay, so now that I've explained what a wet cell is, let me show you a dry cell. What I have here is a 6 inch EBN dry cell. Uh, it has 19 plates in it. I think I misspoke in a previous video and said it was 21 plates. But what a dry cell consists of is two of these big plastic end plates. And if you look in the middle, there's a bunch of um, stainless steel plates sandwiched in the middle with gaskets in between them. And then the electrical connectors on the top. And what's happening here is water from the, from the reservoir above is coming through this tube here. It's going down into the stack of plates. There's holes in the plates, which I'll show you in just one second. The water circulates through all of here. Um, when the 12 volts is applied up here, the electrolysis takes place, and the HHO gas and the, and the, ex, and the electrolyte is kicked out of this top um, fitting right here and circulated back into the reservoir. The water just keeps recirculating, and the HHO gas floats up and out. Now what's nice about the dry cell as opposed to the wet cell is these connectors on the top. Um, if you notice, none of the electrical connections touch water at any point. When you see the inside of how it's put together, you'll see there's no way at any point for anything electrical to come into contact with the water that could possibly short out. That's one of the things that makes it so much safer than a wet cell. I'll show you the inside now. I, I got some plates and gaskets. I'll show you and it'll, give, it'll help you wrap your head around exactly what's going on inside the cell. Okay, the inside of a dry cell is actually very simple. You've got three components that make it up. You've got your end plates, you've got your gaskets, then you have your stainless steel plates. And these gaskets generally are made out of neoprene. Um, in this case, that's what these are, neoprene gaskets. They're a 16th of an inch thick. Uh, some people like to use an eighth of an inch spacing um, to each his own, I guess. Anyway, back to the dry cell. You've got your end plate that normally has bolts going through these outside holes. I've left them out just so it's easier to stack. Okay, so all you do is you take one of your gaskets, you lay it down on there. It's going to create a little cavity in the middle, um, one, sixteenth, one sixteenth of an inch deep that will allow the water to flow in that, in that little cavity. Okay, then you take one of your stainless steel plates and you just lay that on top of there. 
and grab another gasket and lay that on top. And you get the idea. You're going to continue this just until you get a big giant stack of all these plates and gaskets. Now if you look at the, at the, at the way the gasket seals on here, it covers all the holes around the outside where the bolts will be going through. So none of that is going to be exposed to any kind of water. Just this inside area where again you've got a 1 16th inch cavity that's going to allow water to flow between these plates through these holes right here. You have one hole in the bottom and three holes on the top. Now this is the only place on this plate where current can leak. That's one of the problems that we have with wet sills. Even in a case like the one that I showed earlier where the plates were covered up with, um, with um, uh, the inner tube, the bottoms of the plates were still exposed and current can jump out of the bottoms of the plates. It's a very inefficient design. In this case, the only place that the current can jump is through these four holes in the plates. Um, the ultimate dry cell is one that has no holes in it if you can figure out a way for the water to flow through the plates other than going through the holes in the plates. There are a few designs out there um, that people have, have, um, have come up with that are zero current leak or less current leakage. Um, if you look at the tabs over here on the outside, you'll see, again, it's, it's being sandwiched off by this gasket, allowing the connector to be um, connected to the plate without ever coming into contact with the water. A much, much safer design. Okay, so hopefully I was able to clear up at least some of the questions you might have had about the difference between a wet cell and a dry cell. Just keep in mind that a wet cell is always going to be less efficient than a dry cell just because of the fact there's so much more potential for current leakage. Now I know there's going to be some Stan Myers purists out there who swear by his design with the tubes in a bath of water and that's fine. It could be that you know you, you, there is a way to get more efficiency out of that design. I, th just, I think it has to be, it's a lot more involved. It has to do with high voltage and and a lot more electronics, trying to deal with things like resonancy. I won't go into that, but again, in my opinion and the opinion of just about everybody else who's into HHO, um, the best design that's out there today is a dry cell. So again, welcome to the world of HHO. Go out there and buy or build yourself a dry cell. Have fun. Stay safe. I'll talk to you later.